Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to start looking at the reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives. And what we're going to do here is develop a generalized model for the reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives. So these are reactions, or this is like the general class of reactions that carboxylic acid derivatives undergo. These reactions are called nucleophilic acyl substitution. And that's because this carbon here is called the acyl carbon, okay? So in principle, what happens here is when a carboxylic acid derivative, so the Z here, I'm using Z to represent a wide variety of carboxylic acid derivatives. So depending on what Z is, you would go from one carboxylic acid derivative to another. So for example, if Z is a chlorine or a halogen, then we are looking at an acid halide, okay? If Z is uh, an OR, like an alkoxy group, then we are talking about esters here, or if Z is an amine, then we're look, talking about an amide here. So we're talking about a wide variety of carboxylic acid derivatives here. So Z is, uh, or this structure here is representative of all carboxylic acid derivatives. So when a carboxylic acid derivative reacts with a nucleophile, pretty much what happens is the Z is replaced by the nucleophile. That's the overall reaction. So does that mean that the nucleophile attacks and the Z leaves simultaneously? No, that is the mechanism of an SN2 reaction. Okay, so we are not talking about a reaction where a nucleophile is going to attack the acyl carbon and there is a simultaneous loss of Z to give us the new molecule where the substitution has taken place. This is not what happens in a nucleophilic acyl substitution because recollect that this electron push that we are doing, this concerted process, this applies for alkyl halides. when the carbon is sp3 hybridized. The carbon in a carboxylic acid derivative is sp2 hybridized, and this same mechanism that we used for an SN2 reaction, okay, so this is for an SN2 kind of a reaction, that does not apply here. So what happens in carboxylic acid derivatives is very similar to what we saw in case of carbonyl compounds. Now the reactions of carbonyl compounds are different. They are called nucleophilic addition reactions because what happens here is when a carbonyl compound, so uh, a carbonyl compound, and again, I'm using this structure to as a generalized structure for both ketones and aldehydes. Okay, so the R group could be a carbon containing group or it could be hydrogen. So when a carbonyl compound reacts with a nucleophile and we follow that up with some sort of a protonation step, what we get is we get an addition product where the nucleophile and the hydrogen has added to this carbon oxygen double bond. That's why it's an addition reaction. Now we are familiar with the mechanism of that, that this reaction, the nucleophilic addition. So we're going to use that mechanism to develop a model for the nucleophilic acyl substitution and see where does this mechanism deviate. So if we go back to the mechanism of nucleophilic addition here, what happens here is you have the carbonyl compound. The carbon, the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic in nature. The oxygen has a partial negative charge on it. And this electrophilic nature is because of both inductive and resonance effects. And in presence of the nucleophile, so when you have a nucleophile here, 
the nucleophile goes and attacks this carbonyl carbon. Simultaneously, the double bond or the pi bond between carbon and oxygen opens up such that we get to an intermediate where we've got an alkoxide and the nucleophile is connected to that carbon. Okay, that's the first step of a nucleophilic addition. Coming to a nucleophilic, substitu nucleophilic acyl substitution, the first step is very similar. So we have the carboxylic acid derivative and recollect that the carbon in carboxylic acid derivatives is more electrophilic than the carbon in a carbonyl compound. Okay, so for most carboxylic acid derivatives, this carbon is more electrophilic. So in presence of a nucleophile, the nucleophile can go and attack the acyl carbon and simultaneously the pi bond is going to open up and it will bring us to an intermediate. Sorry, it will bring us to an intermediate where we have Z here minus and then the nucleophile connected to it. So notice how these intermediates after the first step when the nucleophile attacks are very similar in both cases, whether it's nucleophilic addition or nucleophilic substitution. Now this intermediate has a name uh, and that name would apply to both cases. If you look at our starting material, the acyl carbon again here, this is sp2 hybridized and the attack by the nucleophile results in a change in hybridization. The carbon goes from being sp2 hybridized in your carboxylic acid derivative to sp3 hybridized in this intermediate. So this intermediate therefore is called a tetrahedral intermediate because an sp3 hybridized carbon would be tetrahedral in shape. The geometry would be tetrahedral. So it's called a tetrahedral intermediate. And we can use the same name for this intermediate here. This is also a tetrahedral intermediate. Now in a nucleophilic addition, once the tetrahedral intermediate is formed, in a subsequent step, when you do the protonation or the proton transfer, you use some proton source. Uh, it could be the solvent. It could be a uh, acid that's added in a subsequent step, but this O gets protonated. And that brings us to our product, which would be the alcohol with the nucleophile connected to it along with water for this particular mechanism here. Whereas in case of the nucleophilic acyl substitution, what happens is after the formation of the tetrahedral intermediate, there is a collapse of this tetrahedral intermediate. And what we mean by that is that the oxygen here with the negative charge it uses one of its lone pairs to reform the carbon-oxygen double bond. So the acyl group reforms. And as you can imagine, as that lone pair comes down to make, uh, to form, to reform the double bond or to remake that double bond, something else has to leave, okay? And now what leaves usually is the Z group here. Now, in principle, the nucleophile can also be kicked out. So at this point, what leaves is decided by whichever is a good leaving group, okay? So there is the collapse of the tetrahedral 
intermediate. This results in the loss of Z. Now Z would lose or Z would leave if it is a good leaving group. Okay, so if Z is a good leaving group, then Z is going to leave in that particular step. Let me fix this here a little bit. So as that happens, Z leaves, Z leaves, and so we get a product where we've got C double bond O, we've reformed that carbon oxygen double bond, and we've got the nucleophile connected to it, plus we get Z minus. So as you can notice, the mechanism of a nucleophilic acyl substitution is a two-step mechanism. Initial attack by the nucleophile to give a tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, so the tetrahedral intermediate is what I've written as TD, tetrahedral intermediate, uh, and then the collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate with the loss of the living group, which is the Z, to give us the substitution product where the nucleophile now replaces the Z. Now, why doesn't this happen in case of carbonyl compounds? Because we did make a tetrahedral intermediate over there. So in this particular case, depending on what these R groups are, you might be dealing with uh, an aldehyde or a ketone. The tetrahedral intermediate does not collapse here because uh, that would imply that you have to lose a carbon containing group or a hydrogen as a negative charge. And those are not good leaving groups, okay? So R minus and H minus are bad leaving groups. So there is no collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate in case of carbonyl compounds. Whereas in case of carboxylic acid derivatives, your Z, if it is a good leaving group, then that can leave and hence the tetrahedral intermediate can collapse. Okay, so that leads to this difference in reactivity of the carboxylic acid derivatives as compared to the carbonyl compounds. Carbonyl compounds do nucleophilic addition. Carboxylic acid derivatives do a nucleophilic acyl substitution. That's a preview of the nucleophilic acyl substitution. We will explore the mechanism of these reactions in much more detail in subsequent videos. Bye.